That one's been really influential for me, but it's also got a lot of great things in there that I've started using um, with my kids. And as they're growing up, I've been actively thinking about that. Hey, welcome back to Builder Funnel TV. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over five top book recommendations I have for construction business owners. Now, over the last decade or so, I've been reading a lot of books. I've literally read hundreds of books in the personal development space. So leadership, sales, marketing, uh, personal finance, investing, all of those types of topics. And after a while, it seems like a few start to rise to the top that you um, are always recommending or passing along or rereading and referring back to. And so what I wanted to do in this video is basically boil it down to five of my top picks that I think every construction business owner should read. And there are lots of other good ones that I think uh, could make a top 10 list, top 15, um, but these ones are particularly uh, super impactful. So let's start with the first one, and that is Extreme Ownership. And that one is by Jocko Willink. And the core concept on this book is basically taking responsibility for everything in your business. So if you're the business owner and something goes wrong, taking ownership and saying, that's my fault, how do I fix it? Even if somebody, one of your employees messes up and they made the mistake, how can you put the onus back on you and say, hmm, maybe I need to improve the process a little bit better or maybe we need to add a check and balance there or maybe I didn't do a good enough job training that person and they need some more education, some more resources, um, or just some more hands-on training. And so when you flip situations around and always look at how can you own it and how can you uh, improve something, then it actually boils down to you taking action steps to improve. Otherwise, it just turns into a lot of blame game and uh, you just don't end up making a lot of progress. Um, he goes, way deeper uh, than that. That's kind of the core concept. It's a great leadership book. Uh, it's definitely in that category. And it's a great one for your whole team to read too. And if everybody starts adopting this mindset, it gets really powerful because then nobody's pointing fingers. Everyone's just saying, okay, what could I have done better in that situation? And if literally you've got two people and, and really one person messed up, but both people are saying, hey, how could I own this and you know improve it for next time or take responsibility? then man, you just start moving forward a lot faster. You don't stall out, you don't take backward steps. And so um, that's one that I really, really love. All right, second one is Growth Mindset, and that is by Carol Dweck. And this one is all about comparing and contrasting, basically having a fixed mindset or having a growth mindset. So as we grow up, we're often uh, trained to think that we're good at things and we're bad at things you know so maybe you're good at math and you're bad at art or you know you're good at music and bad at science or whatever it is um, and you kind of get pigeonholed into these things that you are maybe more naturally good at and so you just think oh i'm good at that but i could never be good at this over here and the growth mindset or adopting that mindset is all about saying i'm just not good at this yet and that's one of the most powerful phrases from that book. And so if you're thinking about some of the skills that you're trying to acquire or develop, maybe you're trying to improve your sales skills, or maybe you're trying to improve your organizational skills, um, so managing jobs and production and all the timelines, um, but you feel like it's just a, a weakness, you know, having adopting that growth mindset is basically saying, hey, I'm not that great at this yet, but I'm gonna take these steps and I'm gonna make improvement. And she goes into a lot of detail about how um, people with this mindset tend to go a lot farther, um, they build a lot more skills, they're a lot more confident, there's lots of positive benefits to having a growth mindset. Um, and it also just gets you out of your comfort zone on things that you maybe wouldn't try otherwise. And so maybe if you have a fixed mindset around a certain skill that you're just bad at something, well, if you adopt the growth mindset, you actually might try to work on it and then you might find, hey, I'm actually getting better at this. Maybe you'll never make it to this level, um, but you can make it a lot further and you can improve. Um, so that one I highly recommend. That's another great, um, just everybody on the team read that book. Um, but that one's been really influential for me, but it's also got a lot of great things in there that I've started using 
um, with my kids. And as they're growing up, I've been actively thinking about that. So highly, highly recommend that one. Um, next one on the list, um, this is a more recent read. So it's called Who Not How, and it's by Dan Sullivan. And Benjamin Hardy actually wrote it, which is a perfect example of what the book is about. And it basically boils down to the concept of anytime you're, you're working on something, you know, maybe you've got a problem in your business. You're going, I, man, sales is just suffering. Like our closing rates seem really low or we just, we always get stalled out at this meeting. Um, okay. So what are we going to do? The, the first thing is you, you typically go, okay, how am I going to solve this? How am I going to solve this problem? And you dig in and you start doing research and, and all of this stuff. But if you reframe it and you say, who could help me with this? Then it opens up your mind to some other avenues and some faster avenues. So you might think about, oh, well, maybe there's a coach out there that I could hire. So who is that coach? Um, that's one path. But the other one might just be who, you know, maybe is in my industry that has already done this and has done a good job. I'm just going to go ask them how they did it. And maybe they have a book recommendation or they have a course or a coach or somebody that, um, that taught them. And so if you think about it from a who, not how standpoint, you can oftentimes shortcut your path to the end result. Um, and that's really what happened with this book is this whole concept is Dan Sullivan's concept. But he wanted to write this book but he said, well, who could I get to write this book? And he ended up finding and, um, and having Benjamin Hardy write the whole book for him. Um, and he kind of goes into why and their relationship within the book. But that was a, a perfect example of actually just like releasing the book was that he actually didn't even do it. And, and I like the idea that you don't have to get stuck in kind of this ego around, I have to be the one to do everything. And I think as business owners, a lot of times we feel that way. We go, well, I've, I've got to do this or, you know, I'm the expert or, or whatever it is. But if we can get away from that and just say, who can help me with this? Um, usually there are some easy answers or obvious answers and somebody could do something much, much faster, much, much easier. So love that one. I would put that at the, probably the top of the list. The next one. So the fourth one is called 12 week year. And that one is by Brian P. Moran. And I read this one a couple years back, right at the end of a year. And the whole concept around this one is basically condensing goals that you would normally set a year out and saying, okay, how can I do this in 90 days? How can I compress this action? And so I, I tested it for myself. You know, I put, I put it into action and writing a book has always been um, on my list to do. And it sounded like a good idea. And going into the year, I was like, yeah, I think this is the year. I'm going to write it. So I took this concept and said, okay, well, instead of giving myself the year, I'm going to do this in Q1. And what I found by doing this is that one, I was super motivated at the beginning because I only had three months to do it. And so I'm going, gosh, I've got to hit this deadline. If I had set it for a year timeline, I wouldn't have even started for half the year. And then half the year would go by and I'd go, uh, now there's not enough time to do this. And so you just find lots of excuses when you set a longer time frame, or at least I tend to procrastinate. So that's something that I've done plenty of times in the past. So having this 90 day window, super motivated in that first month of like, I got to get out to a fast start because I've got a lot to do, made tons of progress. In the middle, I was steady. And I would say I, I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't wavering, but I also wasn't like quite as motivated as the first month. Anytime you start something new, I feel like you've got all this energy. Um, and then it starts to fade a little bit. But then I realized I've only got a month left. And so it, and it was like, finish strong. You've got to power through this. And I ended up, I ended up completing it. Um, I got the first draft done in the first 90 days. And so taking this concept of, you know, a 12 week year, uh, what I would really, you know, you can read the whole book, which I definitely recommend, but the core concept is think about something that you really want to accomplish this year and see if you can do it in the next quarter. So that's the fourth one. And then the fifth one is called Your Next Five Moves, and that is by Patrick Bet David. And this one is a great, like, business strategy book. Um, there's a ton of business books out there on, like, strategy and 
sales and you know leadership and all these topics. This one was good because it was on strategy, but I felt like it was pretty different than a lot of books. A lot of times I'll read business books and you, you just see so much overlap with, you know, you read 10 of them and you feel like 50% of the content is pretty much the same. This one just felt a little bit different. I've been following this guy for a while. He's got a great podcast and YouTube channel, um, but then he launched this book and it's all about thinking more like a chess master and thinking multiple moves ahead. I actually just got off a call with, a, um, is a, he's a custom builder, but they also do whole home remodels. They're out in California and we were talking about basically the environment right now, which is they've got tons of work. Their backlog is pretty substantial. I think he said it, about a year out. Um, and the challenge is uh, labor, right? Just not enough people to take on more work. They have plenty of leads, plenty of opportunities. You know, they're starting to charge for consultations. Um, great, great stuff. But if you start to apply this concept of your next five moves, it starts to force you to make a couple of other decisions. So you're going, okay, maybe you're in a similar environment right now. You've got plenty of work. You've got a backlog. Um, well, you, you kind of have a couple of levers if you don't, um, you can't hire anybody else. Figure that's the challenge. You're going, I've, I've got the work. I just can't hire more people. So you can either book out your pipeline further. So that's something you can do. You can try to get 18 months out or two years out. Um, so that's something you can do. Or you can raise prices. And I would, I would encourage you to, to do both of those. But if you think about why you're doing those, you're doing them for a couple of reasons. Um, but if you fast forward to maybe 18 months, two years from now, a year from now, we don't know when, but if things start to go the other way, economic environment is different, maybe you know the work isn't there. Well, if you've been charging higher prices, hopefully you've been keeping that cash in reserves, and if you've been booking out your pipeline and solidifying that, maybe taking deposits and doing some things there, then you'll actually be able to carry more work into a tough time because you've got it on the books and you've maybe got deposits and so you've been able to lock those people in um, and so they're gonna keep going. Plus you've got extra cash reserves because you've been bumping your margins, pushing your pricing upwards. So now you can continue to market during the downturn when everyone else is uh, cutting their marketing, cutting all their costs, um, they're laying people off and oh, what do you know? Now you can scoop up great labor. And I feel like that, that whole scenario there is the environment we're in right now. Everything's red hot, people are busy, things are amazing, we love it. But if you think one, two, three, four, five moves ahead, you start thinking about, well, what do I need to do today to set me up to actually steal great employees from other companies? And you're not necessarily gonna steal them, you're actually, they're gonna get laid off and you're gonna scoop them up in two years. So anyway, that's what that whole book is about is how do you start thinking like a strategist in your business and thinking several moves ahead. So I really like that one. And so that uh, concludes my top five. Uh, if you wanna see our whole uh, book list, I've compiled all the books that I've been reading. I think I missed a couple here or there, but I've been pretty diligent. Um, if you go to builderfunnel.com slash books, I'll also drop the link below for you. That's got my up-to-date book list for you. Um, I try to keep that uh, pretty current and you can see everything. We've got quick links to um, Audible or Kindle or the physical copy, whatever your preference is. Um, you can snag links to these books there and also see if, uh, if there's anything else that's calling your eye. But um, I'd put those five at the top of your list for this year. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you next time on Builder Funnel TV.